Hello folks, welcome to my review of the Netherton Foundry frying pan. Now this is a spun iron frying pan. It's made in a different way to traditional cast iron. It still has all of the benefits of iron, but without some of the weight. This is however still a heavy frying pan. Now I would imagine the first thing you're thinking is, what is all that stuff in there? Isn't that dirty? No. You see, this is the thing with a frying pan that is made of iron. You season it. So when you first buy one of these, it comes pre-seasoned. But what you need to do is add in some oil, flaxseed oil or rapeseed oil work quite well to season a pan. And then for me personally, I like to put it in the grill upside down, turn it on the high heat and just leave it. So you put in a thin layer of oil and you rub it all around on the outside as well and on the handle and then you just leave it to heat for about 45 minutes to an hour, leave it to cool down, and then you'll get this nice sheen of oil. Now, all this stuff stuck around the edge here is where I've been cooking this this morning. So I've done some bacon, I've fried some uh, onions, I've shredded some carrot in, I've done some peppers and tomato. Now you might be thinking, well, why is it in there, not in here? Well, that's one of the downsides of an iron pan. You see, an iron pan will be eaten away at by tomato. So that's tomato puree in there and tomato passata. And if I leave it in the pan, because I tend to cook in the morning and then go off to work and then come home, heat it up, cook the pasta and then serve up the meal. Now, if I leave it in a pan like this, it will gradually eat at the coating that I've made up in there. So this isn't dirty. This is just cooking fat and whatnot that sticks to the edges. And when I cook next time, that will come off and may well not be replaced at all, or may well have a different coating on it, like a curry coating or something. Which brings me to another downside of cooking in cast iron. If you cook something like a curry, what that'll do is that will actually um, taint the flavor of the next food that you cook. So you mustn't really clean um, iron with like detergent because it can damage the coating. Not necessarily, but it can. So what I'd recommend is if you need to clean one of these, pour in boiling hot water. So get the pan hot, boiling hot water, give it a scrub round, drain the water out. And after you've drained the water out, you can then put a rub it with oil again and it won't retain that previous flavor. But another alternative to that is have another pan. This is another one of their pans, um, but this is a thicker one. As you can see from the handle, this is a thicker grade of iron than what's found in this one. This is great if you're going to cook at really high temperatures, like fried eggs and things like that. This still works for this one, but it's a thinner kind of iron. And this is better for that. Now, another issue with these is, as you can see, I have an electric oven uh, with an electric top on it. Uh, now, these are big and they won't sit perfectly on the ring. So you have to get one of these steel heat spreaders and pop it on that because otherwise what you'll find is that they buckle on the underside. Now they do return to normal eventually when they cool down, but it's an issue that iron is really meant to be used on gas. So what I've done is I've gone outside with a little sledgehammer and I've just banged the underside in the middle so that it's actually slightly concave. And then when it heats up, it will go back to the normal shape. Um, unfortunately, that is an issue with using an electric hob. Um, I prefer gas, um, but I'm a big believer in don't replace it if it is not broke. And this is still working fine, so I won't replace it until it needs replacing. Um, but if you're concerned about that, I would highly recommend going for the thicker uh, iron, which won't buckle or bend in the same way. Of course, you can see where I've replaced the, the seasoning a few times. So there it's thicker, here it's not as thick. Um, sometimes little bits come off, um, but this is just literally oil and cooking fat. So unlike one of these pans, where if, this, if the coating starts to come off, it can be detrimental to your health, uh, these really aren't. In fact, they say they impart a small amount of iron into your diet, not enough to make any major changes, but it's a small amount of iron that with today's eating diets, a lot of people are missing out on. It's got a little handle here that you can hold stuff with, but I would highly recommend using a glove because the heat kind of spreads throughout this whole pan, it gets very hot. Uh, another benefit of these thinner uh, pans is that they heat very quickly. As you can see, it's directly contacting the plate. 
Whereas these other pans, they have like, uh, they have a thicker base on them, so they take longer to heat up. They come with a nice oak handle. Now it is beveled, but this is quite heavy. And if you're filling it with food, this can dig into your hand a little bit. They do replacement handles and whatnot, or you could take a sander and you could sort of make it slightly more beveled, make it less aggressive on your hand. Um, <clears throat> that's the Netherton Foundry cast iron, or sorry, my mistake, spun iron. It's easy to say cast iron because it's, it's out there so much, but yeah, this is spun iron, quite different, quite excellent and a lot lighter. It's handmade in the UK, in Shropshire, I think. So it's, uh, these pans cost probably with postage about 90 to 100 pounds each, but I really think they're worth it um, because once you get used to cooking in iron, you really don't go back. Um, this website also do things like uh, copper pans. Now I'd really like a copper pan, but they're about 300 British pounds. Uh, solid copper is quite an expensive material. Uh, but these are brilliant. I would highly recommend getting one of these. Uh, like I said, if you've got an electric um, hob, then it can be probably get the thicker one, might be better for you. But if you've got a gas hob, these will work brilliantly straight away. Just remember, they are pre-seasoned, but that's just one coat of seasoning. You need to season it yourself as well. And just remember, try not to use detergent on it. In fact, try not to really clean it at all, if you can, uh, because then it retains this really nice kind of flavor that gets imparted into all your meals. And you do need to use a little bit more oil than you would in one of these pans. Uh, but this, if you look after it, as I have, this could last you forever. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider giving it a like, a comment, uh, subscribe, check out my Patreon if you want. And uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.